Our lesson today is finding what you're looking for in your religion. Now, I want to, I guess, apologize to you. Rex says I need to. <laughs> uh, the, this lesson could have been a point on last Sunday's lesson, uh, looking for love, but it wasn't. I, I thought it was, I think it's a monumental lesson. I think it is a lesson that needs to be preached about once a year at least in every congregation. So I'm going to ask you to begin with, are you really looking for God? Are you really looking for the love of Jesus in your life? Is, is that what you really want? And I think everybody here would say, oh yeah, that's what I want. That's why I'm here. That's what I'm doing. Because you see, many Christians think they are and they're not. For instance, some say, I'm a Christian, everything's good. My ticket's been punched to heaven. I'm going there. And it doesn't need to be anything else attached to it. Others might say, I go to church. You see me there every Sunday. <laughs> and uh, Spring will bullet and I put the church mice cartoon in there. That's done by a Methodist preacher, by the way, and he, he's pretty good. <laughs> and he said, uh, the, one of the, the, my, the preachers said, have you heard about the revival going in on at Osbury, I think it is, Kentucky? It's a, a university up there, and they had chapel one day about three weeks ago now, and it's been going ever since. They hadn't left. They've stayed there. And it went from Osbury, it went to another college not too far from there, and thousands of people are driving from all over the country to this revival service going on. Well, Church Mouse guy says, wouldn't it be nice if we, we had a revival like that here? And the little other little mouse said, oh yes, get people to come here and just remain here. That, that would be good. And the, the preacher said, well, you don't show up, but just every once in a while. And he says, I was here last Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's kind of the way it is with all of us. It's not just me or you. It's, it's all of us. I go to church and I feel pretty secure about my Christianity because of that. Somebody else says, I read my Bible, leave me alone. I even apply it every once in a while when I want to. Somebody else says, I give liberally. And the preacher says, does God see it that way? <laughs> yeah. Well, the point is, we go through one day after another. And we are Christians and we think we've got a good relationship with God. And we think everything's okay. And it may very well be. You need to know that. But sometimes it didn't get that way um, real quickly. It got there gradually. We do things gradually. So I want to begin with Ezekiel chapter 22 Verses 30, 23 through 30, I've got up there, it should say 17 through 30, okay? And I can't read that, that's just too long, so I'm just giving you some ins inserts from it. God says the house of Israel, his people, has become dross. It's become waste. It's garbage. What? What? They're not fit for anything but throw away. He says they're like metal in a hot furnace. Now metal could be that, that it gets hot and it just kind of gets flimsy a little bit. Uh, you anneal what's called annealing metal. You put it in a hot fire to make the uh, atoms separate a little bit from it so you can bend it and it won't break. But no, this, this is going beyond that. There's no strength in it. 
and maybe even liquid metal. Israel's land has no rain because of my wrath. The princes take the people, they take advantage of them. The priests make no difference in CU, that means clean and unclean. They're still priests. They're still going to services, but they make no difference. They shut their eyes to God's Sabbaths. They commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy. They mistreat the alien when God said you accept them in your homes. They deny justice. So all of these characteristics that are coming out of the mouth of God about his people. They would tell you, oh, we're fine. We are the people of God. We go to the temple, we worship, we offer our sacrifices. We do all the things that God says do. Yeah. But then they do the other. And so God says in verse 38, I look for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the gap on behalf of the land. That standing in the gap is a, is a term that's mentioned several times in the Old Testament. It's in there about standing in the gap with prayer. You pray for one another. It's about standing in the gap for offerings, their sacrifices for the right reason. In this sense, it is, I want a man who will pray to me for the land. I want a man who will actually build the wall. Do you know what God said? But I found none. I didn't find anybody. And Israel had one day passing and another. Going on with their religion and their heritage. Just like normal. And so God says in verse 31, So I will pour out my wrath on the land and consume them. Let me put it in Henry County terms. I've had enough of this. He says, With my fiery anger, bringing down their own heads about all they've done declares the Sovereign Lord. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, y'all. But I never want our religion to slip. I never want us to get into a situation where we nauseate God so much that he's going to destroy even the land where we live. You remember Sodom and Gomorrah? If I can find 25, or it started 50, but if I can find 20, how about 15? How about 10? How about five? He couldn't find even five. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want it to happen to you. I want us to be such that our religion actually means something. So now we're going to get off of that negativity stuff, that ugly stuff, and we're going to start doing what do I need to do. I want a religion that doesn't mean anything. No, that's not me. If you want a religion that doesn't mean anything, you will find it somewhere. Or you will make it what you want anywhere. Now let me tell you what that means. I can come here to this little old church. 
And if you compare this little old church to some of those big old churches with the activities going on in the big old churches and the activities going on here, this would be pretty dull. And you can make it that way. Or I can be excited about the Lord. I can be excited that I get to come and be with you in his presence, loving on him. And I can make it whatever I want. And the thing was, what Israel was doing was, they were making it what they wanted. They were going through the form of their worship, the form of their living, just like what God said do, but then they were changing it and making it what they wanted. So I want my heart to be open to God. Don't you? Let God come in. Don't you? And here's why. Because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Not from His sight. Everything is uncovered. And it's laid bare before His eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. The King James Version there says, to whom we have to do. And I use it in the NIV here because it makes that plainer. I don't have a choice. I must answer to God. I want him to come in. I want him to, to make me what he wants me to be. And I'm so thankful for the writer of Hebrews because after that negative passage was given, there is something positive. He says, let us therefore, three verses later, let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may, find obtain, we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God doesn't want to treat us like he was going to treat Israel. Like he did treat Israel. God wants us to come into him. Do you know where that is? The picture of that in the book of Hebrews? It's in the Holy of Holies. It's the temple of God. You come into my presence, he's saying, I want you there. That ought to mean something to me. To be in God's presence. To come to him. So I want to appeal to the Lord. For my strength. For my faith. For my religion. To make it mean something wherever I am. And it doesn't have to be in this building. But it has to mean something wherever I am. Lord I want to honor you. I want you to know. How much I need to rely upon you. I can't do anything without you Lord. Every day. All day long. I belong to you. And I need you, Lord, I need you for everything. And in this service, even though it may not sound like it, Lord, I give you praise. I lift you up. And I want my heart lifted up so that it's above this world. And I want my eyes set on heaven. Lord, it's got to mean something to us. So Lord, purify my heart when I come into worship. Let me get rid of the sin. 
Because I know you have said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I want to see you. I want to see you in this service. I want to feel your presence. I want to know you're here. Lord, purify my steps then when I leave this worship service and go out into the world. David said, create in me a pure heart because he knew he had sinned. That's Psalms 51. That's right after the prophet came to him and said, you're the man, David. You're the one. You're the sinner. And all of us need to have God create us a pure heart when we leave here. Purify my thoughts. Paul says, whatsoever things, he gives a long list. In that, in that, those things that are pure. Think on these things. I will make it home whatever I want. If my mind is on that idiot box tube over there and it is in negativity, it is terrible. That's where my mind's going to reside and I'm going to be taken away from God. Incidentally, there is a movie I'm told is being shown at the theater today. It may not be later. Uh, the Jesus Revolution, any of you heard of it? Well, I'm told that it was done to see if Christians would put their money where their mouths are. Hollywood did this to prove that there are no Christians out there that want to see this movie. And the guy that did Frasier, Kelsey Grammer, is that his name? I think it is. He's one of the stars in the movie, and they were interviewing him about it on TV the other day, and he started crying. And he said, my wife said that this is the best role I've ever had. And this is the best job I've ever done in it. Our thoughts. Maybe some of those kinds of things are worth seeing. I, I don't know. The chosen is another thing that you can do at home and get your mind off the dirt and filth of the world. Have any of you ever seen the chosen series? Now, it's very good. It's on YouTube. And you can see it free. And um, it, it's worth you taking a look at. It's about the life of Jesus. So help me to become, Lord. Help me to become the fruit of the Spirit. Those characteristics, he says, this will develop in you if you've got God. Help me to be that. Don't let me just dabble in that. Don't let me just play with that. But let that be what my life is, Lord. Because if I do that, I wind up being the image of Christ. His image. I may have told you all this the other day, but I did a piece on uh, a movie that I showed to a group. And when the bridegroom gave the gift of a mirror to his bride... All you saw was the bridegroom. You didn't see the bride in the mirror. And I parallel that to Jesus. When we look in the mirror, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3, we ought to be seeing Jesus. And I said, that's a good example of what that means, that we ought to reflect the image. If you never want to see that, it's on YouTube. Also, the movie is called Johnny Lingo. I want to be an example, Lord, of the world, but I don't want to be an example of the world. I want to be an example of you. I want you to shape my life, to mold me, to care for me so that 
When I go out into the world, I act like you. So let me learn to trust. You hear a lot about trusting in Jesus in the religious world. I had a man to tell me that one time and I handed him my Bible. I said, would you show me that? Trust in Jesus. You'd think he'd be in there, wouldn't you? It's not. In the Old Testament, it talks about trusting in the Lord. But of course you've got to trust Jesus. He's God. But the Bible doesn't say that. But anyway, I need to trust you, Lord. And the passage I put up there is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when I have a hard task, an impossible task for the world, I need to trust that the Lord is going to be with me. He's going to walk with me and he's going to help me to accomplish whatever I need to do. I'm a Christian. He's my savior. He's my God. Lord, I trust you. Let me act like it now, Lord. Let me show that. I want you, Lord, to let me trust my faith to keep me close to you. Because I know that you said, if I will draw near to you, you will draw near to me, James 4, 8 says. And if I really and truly believe that, and put that in my faith, that all the day long, every day, I'm trying to get closer to you. That is my goal for the day. To get closer to the Lord. I trust. In the promise of James 4. That he will draw near to me. Jude verse 22 and 23 says. Something to the effect. Of that. We repent. And come back to him. And then it says, and we snatch others out of the fire. We make a difference. And this association and this fellowship lifts and pulls people back from the world. That's why it's important. That's why each and every one of you are important here. Because you strengthen you give encouragement to, and you lift. So that's basically the lesson. Let's close it down with something to go home with. If you didn't miss it, you know that God is looking at each one of us. He's looking at me. And if you didn't miss it in this lesson, you now know that God is helping us and he can be trusted. So Lord, let us put off evil and follow righteousness. And since I've got that other one up there too, we need to do that because what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So Lord, let me get rid of the evil. And let me do righteousness. Because I want you to help me. I want your presence with me. And guess what? You're going to find what you're looking for. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're going to find it. You're going to find God if you look for him because Acts chapter 17, Paul says, he's not far from any one of us. Cry out unto him, he will answer. 
If you seek my face, I will find you or I will be with you, depending on which translation you use. But on the other hand, if I get caught up in the world and I seek after evil, guess what? I'll find it. The world will be happy to give you a double dose. It's everywhere. So let us become the righteousness of the Lord on this earth. I'm becoming more and more convinced every day that you and I as members of the body of Christ make him live here. Let me back over that in another way. John chapter 1 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And now the principle is he dwells in us. Let us let the word become flesh. And I ask you each and every day, all day long, to take an inventory. What am I looking for? Are you looking for God? Amen.